All right, Brush Monkeys, welcome back. Um, I am doing something hopefully kind of fun this week. Um, I'm going to try an experiment. Um, some of you may remember my video on uh, the Citadel Contrast paints. And uh, in it I said that they were sort of like painting with inks. That you didn't necessarily have to have the the uh, gray seer or the... Uh, um, can't even remember what it's called now, the Wraithbone um, base coats underneath them. And that you could actually use them over uh, Zenithal priming and get some different effects that way out of it. And I said it was kind of like painting with inks. Well, this week we're painting with inks. I've got um, this carrion crawler from D&D and two uh, like Wild West gunfighters here, um, all from the Reaper Bones line. These were all from the grab bag I got some time back. I'm still working my way through all the grab bag figures. <laughs> so, uh, we got those. I also got some De La Rowney, uh FW inks. Um, I bought these because uh, all the boards and all the... Uh, I actually did my due diligence on this and, and researched them. <laughs> and everybody says these are the artist inks to use. They are art acrylic artist inks. And fairly pigment heavy acrylic inks. I got black. I've got... Uh, sepia. I've got a bunch of other colors too, but those are the ones we're going to use here. And then um, I got the green and white I got in Liquitex acrylic ink, which is just another brand. It's it's probably just as good. Um, I haven't played with them a whole lot. I know these require a lot more shaking to, to stay mixed, especially the white tends to separate really heavily. But um, because the carrion crawler is supposed to be kind of a pale green according to the um, monster manual, I'm gonna mix these to get that really pale green. I'm thinking probably like five to one on these. But uh, we're gonna try with those, and we're also gonna use a couple of the uh, contrast paints to paint these figures up and uh, see how they look. Now, as you can see, I've got them all Zenithal primed, which means I've done the. For those of you that haven't seen my video on Zenithal priming, it means you paint the entire thing black, then you hit it about 45 degrees with gray. And then you hit it from straight down on top with the white. And this one I wanted to be a little bit darker so I didn't hit it quite as hard with the white. These two I think I hit a little harder with the white. So, so anyway, we're going to uh, take a break and mix up our inks and start putting some inks on some models. Alright, see you soon. Okay, so before I really get into painting on this, I want to touch for a moment on... On uh, painting with inks. Um, first of all, inks by their nature are really, really thin. Uh, some of them can be really pigment heavy. Some of them can be kind of pigment light. Um, these are fairly. These are artist acrylic inks, so they're fairly pigment heavy. Uh, the thing about these, though, is um, they're still thin. They're not straight up opaque, so you can still see the. Um, Sorry, um, you still see the Zenithal highlighting through them, and that's really where the Zenithal highlighting shines, is painting with, with inks. Um, but at the same time, because they're so thin, they're not going to, um, they're not going to cooperate with a wet palette at all. So, okay, as you can see, I've mixed up the white and green. To get my pale green and this little thing that I'm using here this little palette tray is uh, really just a piece of I can't remember what it was I ordered but it this came as the packing foam essentially it was to keep whatever I'd ordered from getting banged around in transit but I really liked it and I thought I could use it for the for this kind of thing So, just kind of slapping the paint on there. I'm not being real, real, real careful with it right yet. There's always going to be a chance to even this up a little bit later. And I'm probably going to, because this guy is supposed to be kind of a pale green, I'm probably going to um, shade wash him with a very, very thin down. Uh, 
Coilet green shade or possibly Beal Tan green. Um, but I'm kind of aiming for the picture in the book. And as you can see, this one, this ink is covering fairly well right off the bat. There's a couple little flat spaces up here that it's not quite covering, but it's letting that Zenithal priming show through. And I think once I get the it's almost like an ink wash right now. I think once I get the um, thin down shade wash in there, and I'm going to thin it down because I want it to still be this kind of pale green on the uppermost part, but I want it to be shaded down in among them, in among the little pieces and whatnot. This guy was, um, some of you might remember way back I did a video on uh, doing research before painting your figures. And this was one of the guys that I had done research on because I didn't know, when I got the grab bag I didn't know what it was. Because having never played d and I didn't like immediately recognize this creepy critter. And then it turns out, oh hey he's a carrying crawler, okay. Good to know. Don't know what a carrying crawler is, but you know, I had an older version of the. I had the 3.5 Monster Manual, so I went ahead and looked him up, and he was just kind of creepy pale green. Apparently, in the new Monster Manual, and I only know this because I saw somebody had posted a picture of a painted miniature of it, the carrying crawler is now kind of a. Kind of a beige light brown kind of thing um and that's okay i guess I, personally given the choice i prefer the kind of pale green because uh it kind of gives a little more character and it's something a little more a little different so anyway so there's the pale green on that guy um Uh, inks require a lot more control when you're painting with them, um, especially on like a little figure like this. I'm going to need to pay a lot more attention to where the ink goes on the the jacket and her hair and her clothes and his clothes versus his jacket. If I'm, especially if I do different colors, I've got wildwood and snakebite leather out here in addition to the Forge World uh, sepia and the Nazgrag yellow which I think I'm probably gonna at some point I'm probably gonna use one of those on the boards that they're standing on and try to get some different effects out of that so um, so yeah you have to be you have to pay attention to where they're going because they will run and they'll take a little bit longer to dry than the paints just because they're so much thinner so keep an eye on that as well um, I'm going to uh, look up the carrying crawler in the monster manual to find out you know the mouth and the spines and all this and I think these things on the ends of his tentacles or the tentacles themselves are supposed to be lighter than they are there so we'll take all right we're back and uh i wanted to show that i've got the shade washing done on the carrying crawler here you can see he's pretty i just did it so it's still wet um he's looking pretty good and also i decided to do something a little different with these guys i decided to deviate just a little bit from the intended um painting method on them um in that doing any kind of the the flesh color over where is it uh, dark oath flesh doing any kind of flesh color over <clears throat> excuse me over zenithal priming doesn't look all that great it looks kind of muddy sometimes uh, same with just doing straight flesh wash over it so I did go ahead and base coat their skin with um, the wraith bone 
base that's intended to be used with the uh, uh, contrast paints. So once that dries, we'll go ahead and do the um, dark oath flesh and see how that looks. But as you can see, I did the hair, the leathers, the base, you know, the wooden planks they're standing on. Um, the actual, the plastic base they're on, I'll do probably with black ink later. Uh, the uh, guns were done with black Templar to give them a little bit of contrast. I found a really, uh, I managed to mix up a really nice mix of blue and white for the uh, jeans, so that looks really good. And overall, they just look like, uh, you know, Wild West gunslingers, so they're looking pretty good. So, uh, like I said, I will let the uh, shade wash and the flesh tone, <coughs> excuse me, the wraith bone dry. And then I'll do the uh, contrast on the skin. And I think this guy's got an eye patch that I'll do in black ink. And the, um, and the bases themselves in black ink. And uh, we'll come back and take a look at it, see what that looks like. All right. All right, see you soon. All right, we're back. And I have painted the base bands of the two... Let me get my camera down where you can actually see this. Uh, there we go. Painted the base bands of my two gunslingers with the black ink. And as you can see, it's pretty nice. Um, this is, again, the De La Rowney FW ink in uh, black. I thought maybe it had some fancy name for the black, but no. It's just black. And uh, as you can see, it comes out a really nice flat black. Uh, good coverage, very opaque. So I'm going to go ahead and call the two gunslingers done. Um, the carrion crawler, for the most part, is pretty done. I've got the... Um, I mixed up a, a, a nice kind of mauve color. I thought it was a nice color um, right here. For the uh, for the inside of the mouth, it's kind of... I can't believe that's still wet. Um, <laughs> just stuck my finger right in it. Um, I thought it came out kind of a nice mauve color, and it turns out it's actually dries really really bright bright pink um, so that wasn't fantastic but um, I, I managed to tone that down a little bit with a little purple wash just a little drooky violet in there and so that's looking pretty good so what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to deviate from the painting entirely with inks plan that I had with this because there's some things you just can't paint with inks and I'm going to use a uh, a shabti bone and screaming skull here for all the little claws and little feet things he's got as well as the teeth on him and then the base is going to be done in uh, what did I do with that I just had it um, basilicanum gray I'm gonna do the whole base in that so um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and pause here and finish that up I'm going to go ahead and call the two gunslingers done and ready for uh, mat sealing. So I'm going to put them off to the side. So yeah, um, finish up my carrion crawler and then I'll come right back. Alright, see you soon. Alright brush monkeys, welcome back. The uh, two gunslingers are finished. They're all mat sealed up and looking pretty good. The carrion crawler I just finished up. Um, and he is also looking pretty good. You can see that. There's a little detail that I put on there that you probably can't see on the the camera, but I gloss coated the inside of his. You know, I've matte sealed them and I gloss coated the inside of his mouth so it looked wet. And then there's all these little kind of vents along the side of them that look like they'd be oozing gunk. So I painted all those little trails of gloss varnish to make it look wet. And then. Um, gave him a little snail trail down the cobblestones there because he kind of looks like a slug but there you go there's um here's the picture from the uh 3.5 edition monster manual of what the carrion crawler looks like and then there's my version of him and uh, you can see the only main difference is the one in the monster manual has little pedipalps on the ends of his tentacles are yellow uh the ones on mine are green and uh, he apparently doesn't have the eye stalks that he's got in there. But uh, other than that, that's 
pretty pretty close to being a Karen crawler there. So there you go. That's um that's painting with inks done up for you. Um, again, the the key to getting good results out of painting with inks is uh, first of all get the right kind of ink. You want to get the uh, this stuff is uh, as I call as I said Daler Rowney FW brand uh, artist acrylic ink, and you can see it's got different uh, things on the side for airbrush or brush or pen or what have you. Um, but this is what you're looking for, and it's about uh, seven or eight dollars a bottle, depending on where you go. Some of them will have specials, and it'll be only like four or five bucks a bottle. Some places will be a little more expensive. Um, but this is what you're looking for. Uh, either that, or there's also the Liquitex Acrylic Artist Ink. This is also a really good brand. Um, I was pretty pleased with the uh, with the results I got out of that. The Daily Rowney, I will be honest, is a little more opaque um, than the Liquitex. And has a nice flat finish to it, so it doesn't dry real glossy. You can see on this one, the, the base bands are really, really nice and flat on that. But, um, like I said, the Zenithal Priming is the key to getting really good results out of the, out of the ink painting. Um, the Zenithal Priming allows the, the... The ink allows the Zenithal priming to show through and takes care of all your highlights and shadows so there's not a whole lot of mixing paints or layering paints or all this other kind of stuff and it's a very quick process. Um, and as I confirmed, the painting with the, the contrast paints is very similar to painting with inks um, in that sense, that it allows the Zenithal priming to show through. So yeah, inks and washes and uh, contrast paints, all that kind of thing is uh, another way to take your miniature painting to another level. So give it a shot and, and uh, let me know what you think. Uh, comment below with uh, pictures of your own experiments and let me know how that worked out for you. All right? Okay. See you later. Bye. Hey Brush Monkeys, uh, Tom from Flying Monkey Studios here. If you like what you see, click like. If you uh, want to find out when uh, new videos get posted, click subscribe. Comment below on what you want to see on future videos. Visit our Patreon site for uh, lots of ways that you can support me in doing what I do. You can also visit our Instagram and Facebook pages to see all the miniatures that I paint on this channel and see how you can get your hands on one of your own. Uh, so thanks a lot for your time and thanks for watching my videos and I will see you guys later. Bye.